At this point in time, we have a bare bones Rails application with the minimal files and folders needed to show the welcome page that we saw when we ran our project. Let's have a quick run through of what each of these folders contain and what they mean to the Rails app. The first and arguably the most important folder is the app folder. This is where the main files for your app will be. There are a number of subfolders under the app folder, which I'll explain after I introduce the model view controller concept that is used in Rails applications. Moving on down, we have the bin folder, which in the Unix world stands for binaries, which is another way of saying executable program. The commands Rails and Bundle, which we've used already, and Rake, which we'll use throughout when developing a Rails app, can be found in this folder. In most cases, we won't be doing anything directly with this folder, but it's good to know what it's for. The config folder is, as you might have guessed, where our configuration files, or config files if you want to sound cool, can be found. Opening up this folder, you'll see some configurations for applications, which has application-wide settings, boot, which Rails uses upon startup, database.yml that has all your database connection settings, and environment and routes, which Rails needs to set up its environment and for routing in Rails, which we'll learn about after we create some pages. The environments folder under config is used to store configurations for the different environments that a Rails app can have. Generally, you'll see the production, development, and test environments used widely in Rails projects. While environments contain configurations for the Rails environment as a whole, initializers contain settings and configurations that are specific to your app. As you begin to add more functionality to your app, you'll probably need to introduce an initializer or two to get your app running the way you want. The locales folder is where you'll find the translation files for Rails. Rails comes built in with i18n, which is its internationalization gem, that lets you define the strings that will be displayed to the user in different languages. Right now, we only have the en.yml locale, which means that our site will be in English only until we add another YML file specifying another language. Let's close this for now. The DB folder is where all database-related files, besides the configurations, reside. Later on, you'll be creating migration files that describe what the tables in your database look like. SQLite 3 database files and seed files which are used to populate your database will also be located under the DB folder. The lib folder is where automated tasks and also where your app's extended modules will reside along with their assets. Once your app starts getting bigger, a good idea is always to break it up into smaller modules that you can put together into this folder. That way, you can reuse those modules in other apps you build that will use the same functionalities found in those modules. The logs folder is where the logs for the development server are kept. The development server is the one that we ran earlier by going to the Run menu in the menu bar. The public folder is where all the static files are. We won't be doing much with this folder except to change error pages if necessary. As you can see, the 404, 422, and 500 error pages are all listed here. The test folder is used for unit testing in Rails. We'll be using RSpec for testing instead of the default unit test for Rails, so you can safely ignore this folder. RSpec is a testing framework for Rails that lets developers develop using the test-driven development method. We'll dive more into test-driven development when we start doing RSpec in the next few videos. The TMP folder is used by Rails for temporary stuff. Generally, we won't be directly messing with this folder, so you can safely ignore it. The last folder is the Vendor folder, which is for third-party libraries and assets such as security libraries or database utilities that go beyond the basic Rails environment. Now we've got a basic understanding of what's going on with this Rails file structure, in the next video we'll discuss the basics of the MVC pattern that Rails uses.